What is going on guys? So today we're back with another Pokemon Masters video and today we're actually giving Glacia and Glalie their chance in the limelight and actually taking a microscope, magnifying glass, whatever. And we're actually going to tear apart this sync pair and kind of figure out how good are they? What kind of utility do they bring to the table? Uh, are they actually good at giving damage? And kind of should you even want to pull and try to get Glalie and Glacia? So ice isn't necessarily a hot commodity right now, but it does take an interesting position considering that we have a weakness to steal. And there aren't too many things that are gonna give us a hard time. Unless we get some crazy EX challenge that utilizes the steel type in a very interesting way to kind of take out Glalie, uh, we're basically gonna have free reign to kind of just do what we want here. Starting right off the bat, let's actually look at our base stats here with an HP of 500, attack of 177, defense of 144, special attack of 210, special defense 144 as well, and speed at 195. Of course, the big outlier there is the special attack at 210. That's actually pretty good. Our defense and our special defense matching at 144 isn't a bad thing either. Those are actually really, really nice. Let's actually take a look at some of our moves that we've got here. Starting out with Powder Snow, we actually have a very low damaging move, but it does actually target each one of the opponents, and it also carries a small chance of freezing, uh, which is decent. So depending on how your luck is with RNG, we could have a pretty good chance of freezing each individual opponent sync pair, which actually has a really, really nice ring to it. Ice Beam being the only other damaging move that we have was another small chance of freezing. Uh, it is a single target hit this time, so it's not like we're gonna be able to target every single opponent, but we do have a little umph in us based on that, but not a lot. And then after becoming Mega Glalie, Ice Beam actually changes into Frost Breath, which is interesting. Um, it does lose a little bit of base power, but gains almost a guaranteed crit. It says under certain circumstances it won't be a, a crit, but outside of those very few certain circumstances, it will always be a crit, which is actually nice. It also does drop down to 90% accuracy, which is awkward to say the least. So okay then when we get into our trainer moves we do have x regen all and attention here so x regen all actually looks quite amazing i love the idea of having a way to keep our teammates healthy and we do actually have two uses on it as well so it probably won't be healing like 50 percent health every turn or anything like that but even if we got like a 20 percent heal that'd actually be really really good Attention here does feel a little bit awkward with the self-targeting gimmick that we've seen on other sync pairs like Acerola, but we also have the added benefit of sharply raising the special attack of all allied sync pairs, which actually does help a ton. Our passive is easy, basically no damage from a Hellstorm, which could be interesting if you were to build a team around it. And our sync move is a standard Mega Evolution uh, sync move, 192 power, basically the evolution comes along with it, so great there. Speaking of damage, being that we're a support role, there shouldn't be a whole lot of damage output here. We do have Powder Snow and Ice Beam, which both aren't amazing in any means. Ice Beam producing more damage, but only with a base power of 55. It doesn't set us up to have anything crazy. Although with a special attack of 210 and a way to boost that at that, we wouldn't necessarily leave our team begging for damage, but we also wouldn't be surprising anybody with any big numbers either. Now, as far as our utility goes, being said we are a support role, our biggest utility is gonna come along with being a tank when we need to. And there are some interesting plays that I could see working out here in solo and in co-op if things are set up correctly. In solo, I can see Glalie being a backup tank that can provide heals and can in some areas take the heat off of the main tank. Because attention here shifts the AI's focus onto Glalie, it would seem that keeping a support role with more bulk on the team to allow Glalie to take some heat off of the main support while they can heal up for a turn or two and then shift focus back to them, that sounds freaking amazing. Imagine having Rosa on your team and while she's taking a ton of damage, you need to shift your focus over to Glalie. While you also have already set up for X region all to kick in, and then you set up for the AI to shift focus onto you as Glalie. That sounds freaking amazing. It'll take some heat off of Rosa while she can heal up for a turn or two, and you can take a hit or two while being quite bulky as well. Now in co-op, 
we could set up a very similar situation in that the enemy AI is zeroing in on the more important DPS of the team. Switch focus to Glalie and let Glalie take some damage instead of a striker that would have tons of damage output potential anyways. This would be a little bit more tricky and take a little bit of coordination, but when it works, I think it could be seriously game changing. In terms of future proofing, Typically, I usually harp on how everything is eventually going to get power crept anyways, and investing too deep could end up being a serious disappointment. With Glalie though, there could be some hope for him to stick around for a while. Like I said before, with little to any steel type counters, we could be seeing him as a safe pick for quite a while. There is the possibility of more X regen moves to come, but we already are getting X regen all on Glalie. So even if we got X regen on another Pokemon, it's not like it would be better than X regen all because we're not gonna target the entire team. I am actually really hopeful for Glalie to stick around for the foreseeable future. Always remember though, everything will eventually get power crept or buffed for relevancy. Now as far as some interesting team ideas, so I have two that I think are pretty solid and then I have one that's kind of a cop out. So special attack buffs, regen, this is gonna be pretty easy. Rosa and any special attacker like Hal or Karen, pretty obvious as to why they would go for this. Uh, allow the striker to really shine by just buffing tons of special attack, having regen to basically keep the team healthy, having bar regen on Rosa to keep the team moving. I mean, it, it literally is gonna be a powerhouse of a team setup. Then we also do have Hilda and Phoebe. So not something I expect to completely dominate, but I think it would be really fun to use in the fact that Hilda with Imbor actually has the ability to basically do these massive amounts of damage while taking some recoil damage as well. We would actually be able to counter that not only with the potion on Hilda herself, but with the X region all, and we actually have Phoebe actually taking some recoil damage here and there as well, so it would actually kind of help there as well. So it's not like it's an amazing setup, but it still would actually make that setup last longer than it should normally. And if you can get a ton of damage out of Hilda and Embor using Phoebe's uh, attack buff and using X regen all to basically keep the team healthy, I think that could be pretty interesting and pretty fun to play around with. The last one, which is definitely a cop out, is Candace. I don't have a third teammate for him yet, but not quite sure. But if you could get a striker that can basically have snow shelter where it doesn't take any damage from a hailstorm, uh, this would actually be really cool. The only options that we have as far as Pokemon uh, with snow shelter would be like Grant and Amora and there's another one that I can't think of off the top of my head, but basically there's no, there's no striker that takes a, a complete advantage of not taking damage in a hellstorm. Now, of course, you could throw any other Pokemon here and just let them take a little bit of damage from the hellstorm because X Regen All would actually do really well at healing that. But optimally, yeah, I'd wanna have a Pokemon that has Snow Shelter or at least a way to prevent damage from weather conditions and everything would actually work out really perfect there. I could see that being such an interestingly fun team to run. I would love it. So the final verdict is probably gonna sound a little biased because I love this kit. I love Glalie. I, I have no ties to Glacia in any way, but I love Glalie and I, I just I just think this kit in itself, like the entire package that Glalie carries with it, screams my type of gameplay. So it's pretty easy for me to say that I love Glacia and Glalie, and I can see a few things that can let Glalie really shine, and having a support that doesn't need to be the main like tank of the team is pretty freaking interesting to me. I will definitely be going semi-deep to get Glacia. I have some, some, some gems saved up that I definitely want to spend to get Glacia. But unfortunately, as of me recording this video, Glacia isn't quite out yet. So unfortunately, I am actually recording this a couple of days early to make sure I get it out of the way before Glacia comes out. I want you guys to kind of have a sense of should I summon for her now, should I scout for her, or just completely pass. My personal opinion is I definitely want to scout for her, but since it is a few days earlier, we're just basically going to do one quick scout here and uh, we'll go through and we'll actually do a full video trying to get Glacia uh, in the near future. So we do have the Phoebe Spotlight and we do have Caitlyn Spotlight still as well. Might as well just do 
uh, two daily discounts. I mean, why not? You know, why not? This should be fun. So let's go ahead and throw that down. No flashy animation. What kind of antenna do we get? We did get something new here recently, so I'm hoping. That's only a three star, that's not looking good. I am hoping that we get something at least semi new. Just three star, okay, we can skip all that. And let's go ahead and do on the Caitlyn banner. We'll go ahead and try. Oh, please, something new. I only have like a few sync pairs left that I really need, so. Let's go ahead and see what kind of antenna we got here. Of course, no flashy animation to start with. Just a three star antenna. Looking at our doors though. Decent, nope, just three star. Okay, so that is actually gonna be it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for hanging out, thank you so much for watching. Let me know what you guys think of Glacia and Glalie down in the comments below. Like I said, I'm definitely into this kit. It screams my playstyle. I love the idea of having a an off-tank sort of kind of situation, so. I definitely will love using Glacia and Glalie, and I hope in this video coming up in the next couple of days that we can definitely grab her. So let me know what you guys think of her down below, but until our next video, I'm going to go ahead and head out. Don't forget to join the Discord if you're interested in that, but see. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, always remember that if you like to like videos, you could do that. But if you don't, you could be that guy. Otherwise, uh, let me know what you have to say down in the comments below about the video. I do highly appreciate you guys watching. If you guys want to support me in any way, there are several links down in the description for Patreon, uh, joining the community here on YouTube, or even just directly PayPal if that's your thing. I greatly appreciate everyone's name that's on screen as you guys have showed some sort of support outside of just viewing the videos and I thank you guys you, you don't understand from the bottom of my heart so until our next video guys I will catch you then